VOD people. So today we're, um, or tonight I guess, we're doing a bit more, bit more work on the um, the uh, Svelte app, which lets you track uh, of combats using the Aces High rules from Arcadia Three, a magazine, D and D magazine. Uh, um, published by MCDM. So get okay, issue, issue three if you want the rules to use this. So this is basically basically just gonna be like a game board to help you track where everyone is and not something um, really, um, really complex. The original design or like thought that I had for this were really complex with a lot of automation built in I'm gonna skip that <laughs> for now and just like push out a minimal by minimum viable product um, to just be able to get this kind of to get something out of the door just to feel like I actually managed to finish something. So yeah, that's where we're at. So what we're able to do here, we can add a combatant. We could add a token. Uh, we're not gonna do this time. In these values you would calculate according to the rules again this was supposed to be automated just gonna skip that for now uh, we will add the actor which add, adds it down here we can add a dragon um, you might not like the design that's fine I'm not a designer um, and I don't even have a very good design sense so I don't necessarily even recognize when the design is bad. So this is <laughs> this is just using uh, Picnic CSS and the default styling that comes with that uh, CSS framework. I like it because it basically just hijacks your default styles for buttons and um, inputs and whatever. So you don't really have to play a lot of different uh, CSS classes everywhere to make the stuff work. It just kind of works out of the box with minimal effort. Start the combat. You can drag these around according to where they are. Uh, according to height, you can click here to see the uh, combat uh, combat tracker or to turn tracker. You should probably figure out what happens if you if there are more of these than there are. If if this list becomes too long, I'm I think you just it'll just scroll okay so clicking clicking here should ah uh, okay so that works this does not so clicking dragon should make it the current actor like this but that is not happening are we getting any errors no we're not getting any errors is it not hooked, hooked up I think maybe I dropped it again. Uh, let's see, let's hit into the turn tracker. Right, okay, so I left the button. Uh, but it's supposed to be like this. Yeah, here we go. My initial thought was that you could, uh, you, you could click the different actors to um, to skip to that to that actor, but um, yeah, I there was something with the logic that I couldn't get right, so I just dropped it for now. So you advance turn by clicking here. Uh, let's see, I actually forgot to bring up the there we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, this actually shows behind. Uh, should we fix that? Yeah, probably should. Okay, we got the reset button down here. I'm a bit uncertain on how to do this. Um, yeah. You know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna leave that button the, uh, all the way down there. Uh, let's see, combat screen. Screen that I'm calling it, and we 
we're just going to drop in an HR here. Uh, then we're going to give that Gonna be, give that a bit of, of margin, uh, like uh, two rem all the way around. Now it looks a bit weird that the reset button is all the way out here without the padding. Apparently, this has some default padding built in. Didn't I click the thing? Yeah. What have we got here? Uh, layout. Oh, what's it say? 156. What's that like? Half a rem? No way. Huh? Uh, let's just do um, padding. 0.6 rem. That's a strange padding. Sure, we'll do that. <clears throat> uh, the container, yep. Yeah. We'll just do the same padding as they did. Padding 0.6 rem. No, EM actually. Okay. I really have a fan of um, using dynamic sizes like that, but sure. And I can't really tell you why I'm not a fan either, because... <laughs> I just don't... Uh, I don't know. I just, I, I just really, really never got comfortable with the EM as anything else. I'm just adjusting font size for some reason. Uh, yeah. I was thinking that I should add, uh, add a, an uh, option to add another actor over here. And all that is actually re implemented. All I need to do is like call a function. Yeah, let's add it back in. Let's do that. Um, so we're just gonna add another button here. Uh, let's see, key, combat screen, add actor. Let's go to strings, combat screen, so let's do this alphabetically for some reason. Add actor. There we go. Yeah, these should have a bit of padding. Now, I'm going to use this, but uh, it's not going to work on Safari, at least as of last year. I think I checked, uh, checked, checked last. Um, but someday we might we might be able to use the the gap property for Safari 2. Do I get anything like help if I do this? Uh, supported in Safari 14.1. That's pretty recent, I believe. Let's have a look see uh, Safari browser. Wikipedia. Yeah, that's not very good. Let's do this. Uh, Safari 14. We'll include Safari 14. So that's last year. Okay. So last year they apparently got some kind of it was fourteen point one, wasn't it? Yeah, so it's probably a bit later than that even. 
So late last year, maybe, maybe earlier this year, at some point. So, okay, now it works in Safari too. That's nice. Um, I did just, I hit a snag up with this. Uh, was it last year even? Or was, it, or was it this year? I think it might be this year. Yeah, I don't remember. But anyway, Safari support is apparently pretty recent. Uh, yeah, so let's see how to hook up this um, add actor button thingy. Uh, I think the, uh, what was it again? Um, let me just have a quick look. Oh, right, it was probably in the global thingy, which made it work. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, if we head into the uh, layout, here we go. We've got this, the add act, actor mo modal. Um, I guess we're just gonna steal this, actually. Yeah, for the combat screen. So we can go into the combat screen. Uh, we'll just add at the bottom here. Uh, actually, if we just, we'll just take the whole of this, put it in here, import this, set up that um, show add actor model. Uh, yeah. So that the falls by default, and when you click this button on click, uh, let's do show add actor model and set it true. Yep, that actually does something. <laughs> I believe this has a um, right. This was a styling thing that I didn't want to fix. Right, 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 right. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to layout first and just clean up this mess. Uh, fine. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm just going to go off screen for a bit here and fix. Uh, what's this do then? Combat screen. Now uh, the reset button. Okay. Apparently the turn tracker stuff was added. Uh, move turn tracker to nav. Does that also add the buttons? Yeah. Okay. Well, right. Uh, let's undo that and just do the move. Buttons from turn tracker list. Next, we're going to add. Yeah, okay, now we're at the. Yeah. So, in the add actor modal, we. Oh, whew, man. There's a lot in here. Uh, <laughs> Um, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, we're basically just wrapping the actor form, which we're already using for the setup screen, and using that in basically the same way as we do for the setup screen, the only difference being that we're showing it in a modal and wrapping it in like the old modal stuff, but there's a lot of stuff missing here. Because, because, well, it's, oh, okay. Um, that's interesting. Uh, how, how does that work? Why is there, is that the size of the nav? Maybe? That is, 
That is bizarre. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Okay, first things first. We have to fix the uh, the overflow here. So if we have a look inside here somewhere, yeah, here we go. Min width. Um, that kind of fixes it. In all fairness, this doesn't look too bad. <laughs> I mean, it's very narrow, but it's not necessarily a problem. This is a long name monster. I mean, that works fine. Most of the stuff you want to put in there fit. Um, I mean, Sir Barnabas. I don't know. It works. But anyway, uh, I think that when we hit these smaller sizes, um, what's the size of this uh, right now? Less than 500 pixels at least. Um, why 500 though? Anyway, okay, so let's just do um, at media. This is not really how I'm supposed to do it. Did you check for screens and everything? But let's do with max width 500 pixels. That's apparently the magic number. Uh, for modal, article, uh, min, width, let's set that to auto, I guess. And let's set the actual width to just 100%. There we go. Okay, so that fixes the, the width issue. Then all oh, next thing though is, let's see, do it, do it, did I? Okay, what's with the backdrop though? If we uh, if we do this, does it um, this free? <laughs> what's even happening now? Uh, ew, let's see. What's what's going on? Oh, 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 it's a lot wider. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't sure what was going on. Okay, let's see. Very narrow for some reason. Ooh, magic. Um, okay, so it's trying to run off screen. Right, so there's another problem. If it's too tall, we can scroll inside of it. Um, well, there is an easy fix for that. Should we just do that? <clears throat> sure, let's do it. Uh, section content, where are you? Content. Did I really give it a class without actually referencing it? Oh, yeah, 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 I refer referenced it before, before I copied everything out. Okay, so let's just do content, uh, overflow, Y, auto. That should didn't do anything, right? Because it's actually the modal that's disappearing, not the content itself. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Oh, right, because it also turned off the scrolling thing, which might affect it, I guess. But hmm. what if we just made the whole thing scrollable, uh, the modal itself? Do we have anything standing for overflow? Huh? Overflow Y auto. Does that work? Doesn't look like it. Scrolling like a maniac. Uh, which is it? That one? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we might have some problems with with um uh <laughs> what's the opposite of tall? Uh, short, I guess. Short screens. Sounds a bit weird. Anyway. Why is it doing that though? That's that's so weird. Is it 
is the whole thing offset somehow? I don't get it. Wait, why is it? Why is it being like this? Okay, let's. Uh, wait. Uh, let's put this over here. Let's have a look. See. So. Why is everything shifted up? Is there an easy way to figure that one out? He wondered aloud to himself. Oh, it's because I've scrolled down on the page. But why are we? Why are we even considering? Okay, <laughs> get out of it now. Okay, let's see. <laughs> okay, so if you scroll down, it the whole thing. I thought it was. Wait, what? <laughs> As you probably can tell, this was not my intended design. Uh, stuck to the bottom again. Uh, let's stop doing that. The backdrop and this has a position of absolute. Which would anchor them to the viewport. Ooh. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Doesn't it? Unless they're wrapped in some kind of relative thing. Which I believe they're not. Are they? He asked rhetoric uh, rhetorically. Uh, let's see. Mm. Yeah, okay. We'll just have to deal with it. Uh, let's see. If we inspect this. Is there a way to easily... See if anything above this is actually. Let's uh, can I can I just do like a. Yeah, that works. Okay. So that's relative. Uh, which part? Uh, the article. The article's relative. Okay. Sure. Then there is the modal main and the svelte thingy and then the body, which has overflow hidden at the moment. Okay, so according to some super simple research, this looks right. I'm guessing that the card class, which I've applied or yeah, we positioned that far. No, wait. Um, this article, actually. It has position relative. Why? Oh, right. Because I probably tell it to. Uh, if I have a look over... No, this selects... The whole modal. Ah, probably... Yeah, okay. So this... That makes the first child relative. Okay. That makes sense, I guess. This is some kind of library that I'm using to prevent scrolling when you open modals. But that shouldn't stop them from... Hmm. What if we just take this out for now? Oof, we really didn't do it like that. Uh, I've got some mismatched tokens somewhere. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, okay. Why are... <laughs> Wait, what? That doesn't make sense. 
Okay, whatever. There we go. <laughs> I didn't even notice that it used HTML commenting for some reason. Um, yeah, sure. Add actor. Yeah, so now we're able to scroll. I don't... Hmm, I... Okay, my second computer has awakened. Uh, let's... Uh, or, okay. Shut down. Shut down anyway. Um, I... Uh, let's turn up this. Okay. I thought that when you used absolute, it locked itself to the viewport, but apparently it doesn't. So I might be wrong. Uh, let's have a look at the modal itself, which is this one. <clears throat> and it has one sibling, which is the backdrop, yes. And this section it seems, which is, wait, what's this? Oh, okay, it's the body. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. So its position is absolute. Yeah, yep, that makes sense. Uh, gotta have that absolute positioning. I'm trying to I oh, guess I'll just have to look it up. Uh, CSS but uh, static modal how to get Bruce with static modal that does not disappear and loads by something something uh, let's see how to make a modal box to see this in JavaScript uh, blah 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 Sure, let's have a look at Stack Overflow. What could go wrong? Um, yeah, that's just a bootstrap thing. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Mm. Yeah, let's have a look here. Modals, materialize CSS. Oh, right, materialize. I haven't looked at this for three years at least. <laughs> I remember exactly because uh, it was when I was at my last company, which is two years ago actually. So yeah, two years at least. <laughs> anyway, modals. Yeah, you click this and you get a modal. Oh, magic! A bit, whoa, whoa, why? Why all the? What? What is happening? Why is it doing that? I'm not. Not certain if you can see that on the stream, but it's really laggy. It's a low frame rate. Like, oh, oh, wow. Okay. My, uh, uh, what? Oh, it's a bit flaky. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> Enough of that. <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. Button trigger initialization, opacity, everything looks good. And there's a lot of functions. Fixed footer or whatever. Ooh, I can date. I use those. Um, gaggle mail. I'm actually curious now. Uh, do you have a link like to the, to the source code of this component? Uh, nope, those are just general. 
I don't remember which library it is. It, uh, it's one of those material um, material design libraries for React, which has uh, like a link on every page that here's the source code for this component, which is really nice when you want to look up how, <laughs> how to do this. Because this disables the scrolling while also having the backdrop and everything. So we're just going to do the old. Look, it, this does exactly what I want. It's almost as if you should be, there is a benefit to using component libraries, which I don't really like, but you know, you to you. Uh, let's see, where's the actual cap, what caption? Oh, I'm behind the modal now, I guess. Modal header, modal content, modal one. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I was a bit confused by the... Anyway. Uh, position fixed. Wait. Which one's which? Oh, crap. <laughs> MDN. Um, uh, position. <laughs> uh, this one, I guess. Web kit sticky. Yeah, the sticky one is cool. Oh, that would work. Uh, select. Oh, wait. I need to select the sticky thingy. Ooh. That's really cool. Anyway. <clears throat> Fixed. The element is removed from the normal document flow. Which is the absolute then? Okay, they both have to do that. No space is created for the element in the page layout. It's the same. It's positioned relative to its closest, closest positioned ancestor, if any. But it's to the initial containing block established by the viewport, except when one of its ancestor has a transform, perspective, or filter property set to something other than none. See the blah, blah, blah. In which case that ancestor behaves as the containing block. Note that there are browsers, browser inconsistency with perspective and filter contributing to containing block formation. Its final position is determined by the values of top right, bottom left. I see. While the other one, it is uh, blah, 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 is relative to the closest positioned ancestor, if any. Otherwise, it is placed relative to the initial containing block. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's found position, blah, 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 blah. This value creates a new stacking context when the value of Z index is not auto. The margins of absolutely positioned boxes do not collapse with other margin. I'm not fully sure what that means, but I don't think it's relevant. Fixed. This value always creates a new stacking context. In printed documents, the element is placed in the same position on every page. Okay. Stacking context. I'm guessing it has something to do with... Okay, I'm not going to read all this. <laughs> let's be honest. Uh, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Containing block. Is that relevant? Uh... The size and position of an element are Im often impacted by, by its containing block. Most often, the container block is the content area of an element's nearest block level ancestor. Block level? What does that mean? Block level elements. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, or, oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so it's whether or not it's block or in line. Right, right, right. That makes sense. Uh, so let's not complicate it with the actual sp specifics of how that works. <laughs> uh, blah 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 okay um if so i'm what i'm what i'm reading here is we probably should just try fixed so let's head back to our example and are we inside of the modal yes so instead let's try changing these two to fixed and see if that works okay it actually did. Cool. Okay, let's try this. Ooh. It actually
actually work. Not really sure why though, because according to the description given here, it says the absolute closest positioned ancestor, if any. Otherwise, it's placed relative to the initial containing block, which kind of reads the same as this. It is positioned relative to the, to the initial containing block established by the viewport. So I'm guessing that the initial containing block, ah, it's the document, of course. Right, right. So it's positioned according to the initial document. What's visible in the initial document, I'm guessing. Or fixed as on the viewport level, which also me explains why it's shown on every... Oh, okay, that makes sense. Huh. That actually... I think that made sense. Anyway, if we reintroduce these now, uh, uh, that's the right buttons, like this, oh, it works. Okay, what happens now? Oh, this works too, uh, to some degree. Um, <laughs> hello? <laughs> there's a bit missing at the, at the top. Okay, so there's, okay. What what is what is this? Hello. The top is missing. The bottom is here. Why not the top? Hmm. Is it this? Oh. oh okay. That removed the whole thing. Okay. So that did something apparently. Did I remove the other whole thingy? Uh, yeah. Okay, so what if we then make the content overflow Y to auto? What happens then? Nothing. Nothing is what happens. Okay. So it doesn't help if we make this overflow automatically. And if we specify that this should, it will overflow some way. Why is the top cut off? Does that make any sense? No. No, it does not. Is it because of this? No, that shouldn't be. Okay, let's do this then. Um, to 300 there we go let's do it a bit okay why do the top disappear off screen doesn't make any sense is there some kind of transform on this what's happening Hmm. <laughs> Header article. So that's the content. Why why do I have a let's see. So the model itself and then there's the content of the modal. Why are these two different things? Oh, I guess I had to wrap this to make it work. That seems like a logical thing, I think. Might this be related to the, uh, to the end, uh, no scrolling thingy? So let's do this again. And see what that does. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right, right. So the bet, uh, what happens now? The same thing. That is so bizarre. Why does the top disappear? Why, why not the bottom? Oh man, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Didn't 
hard day apparently. Let's see. Why does the modal disappear off screen? Does it have any like thingies set to something weird? Doesn't look like it. Um, okay, don't really have a good answer for that. Uh, what if we put like a tiny phone? This is a tiny phone. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> the SE is pretty small and this is plenty of space. So I'm gonna call this a non-issue. Yeah. I'm not gonna be, whoa. Does not scale very well. <laughs> uh, which is not necessarily the point either, but yeah. Maybe we should set a max width. Not a bad idea. I've decided basically for to work on small screens because I imagine you could use this while at the table, for example. And I then I wanted to make it work on small screens. Um, basically. Basically. Uh, yeah. Seems a bit weird when you do that, but yeah. Oh man, the odds are not far away. Uh, let's see, let's do this. Check this again. Fantastic. Um, just to make sure it works still. Uh, I don't know. Human. Uh, high flat modifier. Uh, starts at six altitude. Yeah, that works. So these names are not aligned correctly because this is actually a larger HTML element, as you can see now. So this is actually a square where it's aligned to the top because this is supposed to be an image and this is the old text. So that's why the names are shown like that. Um, could probably do something about that. Probably gonna do too. Let's just, let's just commit this um, fantastic progress. Let's see, add, um, add actor button to come back screen. Also fixes some layout issues with add actor model. We go. Let's see if there's a quick fix for the um, for the uh, the name alignment. Uh, let's see amplitude layer. Yeah, so we've got images, but what we could do is we'll say if actor token URL show this. If not, show something else. And that something else should probably just be like a strong the actor dot name. Uh, not really loving the strong thing, so let's just do span instead. And those are center aligned, I think. Yeah. So in theory, if we add another actor, uh, we'll call this uh, Griffin. Let's actually get a token for that. Uh, Griffin token. Majestic Griffin, okay. Uh, copy link. Paste it in. Ooh, preview, very fancy. Yeah. That works. Boop. Boop. <laughs> Non-transparent background, apparently. Doesn't really matter, but sure. Okay, so let's call that fixed. Uh, show text if no token image is specified. The next thing though, which is if we move something to the top, the thingy disappears 
and that is set by poo -poo 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 -poo, this one. So I think the easy fix here is just to, <laughs> to, to hack it. Um, well, actually, let's let's make it so that it always goes towards the center, I guess. Yeah, that, that's hmm, let's have a look. So let's first get rid of this and make it uh, bindable. Uh, we're not bindable, but yeah. And we're at the ah layer, right? So if la ooh, layer dot altitude is more than eleven, uh, make it down. If not, make it up. Now it goes downwards. Maybe we don't want to. It goes upwards. So that looks like it's. But the question then becomes. Uh, if we do this, so they all do upwards, unless you're at level twelve, in which case it does downwards. But what we could do, is if you're above. Level six, we could say, ah, yeah, you're you're higher up, so we're gonna do downwards instead. Does that make sense? Kinda, kinda does. I think I'm gonna keep it like that. It feels more. Hmm, does it feel more deliberate? I don't know. We'll keep it like that. Uh, show pop-ups. Pop-ups. Pop Pop-ups. Below. Token. When above. Altitude 6. There we go. So, the last thing that I should add is some way to both edit the existing actor or rather the name basically and the token probably and a way to remove it so I'm guessing that should be something you could do by clicking it oh great <laughs> at the moment when you click it it's get it gets removed so that works um, <clears throat> in theory I could do something along the lines of like a context menu where it kind of slides down below it or something but those are they those very quickly get tricky because you have to take in, into account is any any of it disappearing how, how do you make sure it all shows within the boundaries or where the uh, user is able to see it and everything so what i think instead we're going to do is just do like a modal in the middle of the screen with the different options which i think is easier so are we gonna do that now though sure let's do that now um, so what we're gonna do then is uh, yeah we'll just put it all into like a modal I think Uh, let's call it <clears throat> edit actor actor context model uh, actor edit actor model model and it's going to have much of the same stuff that this one does, actually. Brr. And this is the point <laughs> where I realize uh, this should probably be put in like a general modal thingy, Majig. Yes. Because all of this is very relevant for, yeah.
So everything inside of this article should probably... <laughs> uh, yeah. Screw it. I'm going to copy it this time. Copy the whole thing. We'll paste it in here. And we'll change the header to say something else. So this is going to be uh, edit actor model title. Don't have a close button, that's fine. <clears throat> going to be some content, which is not going to be the actor form, and the I don't think it's going to have a footer actually. Let's remove that too. Let's keep the, this here. So this will this will be basically the same as add uh, no no no. Actor form. Do, 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 do. Label field label. Why do we have those? <laughs> right. Why did I put field labels? Flanks. Space between. Right, because we want the thingy magic on the top. Right, 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 right. Oh, right. I mean, we might actually just want the whole thing. Yeah. We might not want the different one at all. We probably want to rename this. So let's call that this actor actor modal. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's just delete these ones. Get it out of the way. And then inside of the, I'm guessing combat screen, which I accidentally removed from that list. But it's still available here. No, not that one. Let's do this. Uh, add actor modal. Let's rename this here too. Let's just call it actor modal, like so. Yeah. And then in the no, not the actor. I think. No, because that's just like the, yep, yep, yep. So yeah, on the modal, yep. Yeah, we, we probably want to set like, <clears throat> show delete. Show remove actor button. I'll set that to false by default. And if we do, 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 do reset, so let's just do like a const show actor modal. And that's a function which takes. A bool, which uh, no, that's not what I read in TypeScript. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's just add that over here. Um, show remove edit boolean. 
So it set, sets show from here to the same values edit, and then show add actor modal to true, like so. So down here, we say show show actor modal like a false. So it's not an edit, but if you click it, it should edit. Oh, but these are not in the same. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so let's let's roll back all of this actually. Uh, nope, this should still be renamed. Yeah. <clears throat> so inside of the actor modal, let's do this first then. Uh, let modal blah, blah blah blah. Let actor. Do we export any of this? No. How do we? Right. So we need to export this. And also, uh, we could probably derive whether or not it's an edit or not by by inspecting this uh, when we initialize, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna make it explicit. So export let uh, is edit the default is false, which means that this should probably work still as before, human. Uh, no token URL, we'll just add some stuff here. Yeah, gives us another human. Good. Then in the layer thingy, layer, uh, altitude layer, Katarina, I think. that screen we're able to just grab this paste that in here uh, let's just grab this one too just for um, just to make it easy yep we'll go down here we can make sure to import this that still works but this will always be true should, should that be one of these maybe so it's always an edit right we also need to set the actor like this and Edit actor, actor, actor to edit. Edit actor. Then, if you click any of these, don't remove it, but instead, we set the edit. No, show. Mm. Edit actor. <laughs> Just <laughs> check the name though. Um, actor to edit. I don't know. Uh, let's see. And then we'll go. We'll go here. Const um, edit actor. This actor. Uh, let's set this here. Let actor to to edit so the null by default uh, actor to edit go to actor actually we don't need that at all 
if that's the case. So if we go down here, we just said actor to edit, to, uh, to not pause, but like null. Actor to edit. So as long as that is true for some kind of uh, valid reason. And uh, yeah, yeah, we'll just do, do it this way. Sure. <clears throat> okay, no errors. Click this. That worked. So the question now becomes, if I change this to human, to humanoid, eh, wait, <laughs> close. Yeah, that doesn't propagate though. Right, which is kind of good uh, because you want to be able to cancel, I think. Which makes me think maybe we should just make this. Should we? No, we'll leave it like this. I think, yeah. So if we go back to the actor modal. We'll get a some feedback whether or not it's to edit. And if it is to edit, we won't have this button. So. Is it is an edit? Do something. Which is not this. If not, we're gonna do this. Like so. If it is an edit, well make it a button. Should we think here okay let's do the over here and let's make this oh that's not how we do it text key uh, add actor ah this is all breaking down this is not this is not an actor modal uh, uh, delete no case the delete, delete, and we had all these strings. Uh, actor modal delete, delete. Add actor, add actor. I believe this belongs over here now. All right, we need this. Um, actor modal. This too, add actor dot title. I think all of these are just basically gonna go in here now. And we'll just do add actor, actor modal, let's do add title instead. Uh, <clears throat> there we go. 
this is only if is edit. So we're gonna need to do this here too. If not, this is gonna be add actor edit title. Um, There we go. This is going to be a delete. Uh, then there is going to be a. Actually, I think the whole footer is going to be different. So let's just move this footer inside of here instead. And let's make this a new footer. Well, actually, the problem is not the footer itself, it's the general layout that we're going for here. So I think we're going to do this instead. So with the text inside, actor modal uh, save. Uh, do, do, do. Save. Save. We're gonna give it a class called edit. Uh, if the if it is an edit, and we're gonna give it a class called add. If it's not an edit, so this should now be add. And we'll also need a footer that edit for this. So this is going to be display flex still. We're going to justify with space between. And we're also going to do some custom stuff for the save button, which is going to have some extra padding, I think. Uh, what do we do with the close, not the close button, but the, <clears throat> the other button? Do we put anything special for that? Uh, oh, it doesn't look like it. I think it's like point three, and then we'll do like two. But this that's the wrong way around. Uh, two run. So if we click now, yeah, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> uh, let's see, where do we go wrong? Oh, this says humanoid. Crap, it has been updated. It's just that the view back here is not updated. If I refresh, what happens then? Nothing. Okay. Uh, clicky. Right, okay. Anyway, uh, when on the altitude layer... Actor to edit. When that is set. Ah, right. This is not supposed to be edit. It's supposed to be this edit. Isn't it? Yes. So if we now open this. Edit actor, delete, uh, actor modal save. Oh, uh, uppercase S. That's not right. There we go. Yeah, that was supposed to be wide. Uh, oh, right, right, right. I didn't give the class. Uh, class, not that one. Uh, save button. Oh. <laughs> 
I got them the right way around the first time. Ah, uh, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the other way around. I did it right. Man, shouldn't have thought of myself. That's a bit low. Like, ooh, it's your three. Yeah. Sure. Let's see. Uh, okay, that looks right. So let's just hook up this because that's easy. Uh, on, click. Uh, remove actor, actor. Uh, yeah, we don't really need that rigmarole here. So we just remove actor. And up here, we just add a specific right, cons. Remove actor. Counter, counter state, remove actor. Uh, actor. Yeah, so this is probably going to have to be like a proper one now. Actor. From state. Do, 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 do. Okay, yeah, it's complaining about a lot of stuff here. So I'm guessing that's because of the. Ah, um, that doesn't really work. Encounter state. Get actor. Uh, let's just do like an empty ID for this. So, actor dot id. Let's just call that an a. And if encounter state remove actor a. There we go. Uh, let's see, that's one, that one's superfluous. Let's remove actor. We save this. And. Right, we need to close it afterwards. <laughs> Doesn't make much sense if not. Um, sure, close. So if we add another actor, humanoid, add actor, click it, delete, removes it. Nice. Uh, so the next thing is to actually save it. So I'm thinking we might do much of the same. Hmm. So if I change this to Elven, close it, click it again, still Elven, click the human, click back to Elven, it's still Elven. Okay, so this view does not update, but it doesn't save it either, it looks like. So my initial thought is to not export this uh, well, to export this, but in, and, uh, also use a local variable. So if we set this to null initially, 
and then we say um, new actor. Now this is either going to be actor. Hmm. No, that won't work. Um, Yeah, we'll you yeah we'll do that, but also whenever we mount, which will happen because we're removed from the from the DOM all the time. So whenever we mount, we set new actor to either actor whatever it is now, or or the default one. Um, Like so. Right. So to save an actor, const save actor. to be actor and actor the ID if the ID is not something valid just return a for actor and we'll look at the encounter state get the actor based on the ID and if a is set then do encounter encounter counter state uh, update actor actually let's do, do another one of these if a is not something valid return to uh, should we close no well just now nah, we'll do like this uh, yeah so a dot name should now be new actor dot name Token URL. These are all named the same, aren't they? Oh, right. Because that ID will screw it up. Will it not? Is ID really necessary anymore? I don't think so. So, what we do instead is. Just say A is the existing A merged with new actor. Yeah, that works. And then we'll do an n count counter state update actor and pass an A. Uh, this, yeah, we don't need this uh, temporary variable, strictly speaking, so we'll just do this. And that should save the actor. And if we go here to the save button on click. save actor so in theory click human which is the humanoid click save close this awesome sauce that actually worked um, <clears throat> the and I 
next thing is also after updating called close. There we go. That looks like it actually fixed the it's gonna be this bring this back to alpha. And if we now click here, it shows it, it changes it back to L then it works. Uh, oh, there's a dragon too. I'd forgotten all about him. Uh we'll just change this back to L. Save. Yeah, that works too. Yeah, it works very well. Okay, that looks like editing is, is uh, fixed. Um, yeah. Add actor editing. Oh no. <laughs> My add actor button doesn't work. Why? Unrecoverable error in next update will trigger full. Uh, that's fine. With, uh, I want to know the details. Uh, hmm. CDX is null. That doesn't bode very well. I think, I think, uh, I think the problem is this. So we do this. No, it was not that. Let's just do a refresh. No, it's not that, not that at all. Something is null. <clears throat> oh, right. We didn't actually update everything uh, to use new actor. So, actor, 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 actor. Uh, yeah, all of these should be using new actor. Then we do a save. Why is this complaining? Okay, we'll get back to that. Um, new actor is equal to actor. Yes, yes, yes. Blah, 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 blah. And I think the only other place is... Ah, right. Um, mm hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. So we're not clicking here. Yeah, that works. So, um, uh, something else. I don't know. Uh, illithid. Uh, Crapperoo. Uh, so we've got the right one, the ad actor, yes. It has the on click hooked up to add actor, which is the way all the way up here. It should bind to the new actor thingy, doesn't it? Um, actor form hooks up the new actor, yeah. Let's see, log, add, add actor. Uh, no name. Oh, <laughs> if it doesn't have a name. <laughs> Right. Class mistake. 
and lifted. I don't know how to play for it. Will it right? There we go. And we're able to uh, delete it. Yep. And in theory, so the humanoid has initiative of 10. The elf has initiative of 35. So if I change this to 8, click save. <gasps> they switch places. Nice. That actually works too. Okay. So I'll just amend that last commit with the fix. <clears throat> and the last thing I'll do tonight uh, is not lo uh, load <laughs> as actor. <laughs> uh, that one. Bit of a dirty hack, but that works. Uh, let's just amend that one too into the previous commit. There we go. The last thing I'll do for reals this time is fix these buttons. I want to switch them around. So if we head into combat screen, yes. Reset button container. Yep, yep, yep. Justify. So <clears throat> here we're going to do space routine again. And we're basically going to do the same thing that we did with the other others. So we're going to... Uh, do we actually... Let's see. Right. Uh, do we... Have any way? So first of all, they're going to switch places, like so. And we'll just give this, like in the add actor button. Not the best names, but here we are. Um, Reset the button container, add actor button. Okay. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> padding. 0.3 rem. 3 rem? Uh, didn't I switch them around? Yes. Why is it not? The reset first, yeah. This is not the. Oh. Wait, where? Wait, what? <laughs> uh. Import not found actor. Here? Ah, right, 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 right. So we need to do import type actor. Oh, uh, actor from state. Yeah. There we go. And there we go. Ooh, are we happy with that? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Good enough. I think it, it, I think at least it's a bit more clear that this is what you want, and this not now it kind of echoes this. So it's kind of a nice, you know, like a pairing where you're, you're learning that the white buttons are the ones that you want, in according and and. In, in addition to that, they're blue instead of red. Um, yeah, that's going to... Yeah, we're just going to amend that with two. And then... Oops. Switch button uh, order for combat screen. And there we are. I think that's all I'm going to put in for now. So I think the next step is just publishing this. So I'm not really sure. I've, I've been kept, kind of debating where to put this. It's built with SvelteKit. So I preferably want to put it somewhere where SvelteKit is, is supported. It doesn't really use much of SvelteKit yet. So it could probably just be like a simple static app with, um, with just like a spa solution. 
but I'm not gonna put. Uh, I'm not gonna do that just because I wanna. I wanna be able to expand it pretty easily later, which I might do. Come back to it later. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna put it somewhere where Svelte is supported. So my main, my main, my main considerations for now, uh, or at, for for the moment, is um, it's either. Uh, let's see here. Uh, where art thou? That verse. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Well, that's new. Cloud for pages. I don't think that it's, uh, they had official support for that before. So, I'm looking at the, the official ones, and I'm leaning either towards Vercells or Cloudflare. I kind of like the concept of Cloudflare, but I'm, I think I might just end up using Vercel, especially considering that Rich Harris, which is the creator of Svelte and Svelkit, recently started working there. And Vercel already develops Next.js, which kind of does the same thing as Svelkit does. And they have excellent support for it. They they, they basically built the infrastructure to, to to make that work properly. So I'm kind of leaning towards just doing the doing what doing it there because it, it'll probably just work out of the box. So yeah, I, I want to check out what this. Um, I I can't really remember the difference. What's uh, what's pages again? I don't really. Uh, Clever workers are cool because they are they're built on on uh, like um, open web technologies, and they use uh, Wasm behind the scenes to run everything, which is really, really nice. Uh, what's pages again? I, I I believe I read the blog post for this. I'll, I'll have to have a look, but I'm I'm probably gonna end up using um, Vercel. I've used them for stuff before. They're really nice. Um, Way back when, when they were called uh, now that it's age. Way back when, it's probably just a couple of years ago. Anyway, so I'm probably going to do that sometime in the near future, like in the next couple of days or something, when I make up my mind. <laughs> and right now it's uh, analysis paralysis. So, yeah. Well, that's it for now. Um, thank you for watching all the way through. I. Um, I will probably be working on something else but for my next stream. We'll see what that is. Maybe I go back to the, the .NET thing that I started on but didn't really get anywhere. Yeah, sure. Maybe that. Anyway, thank you for watching. I uh, hope to see you next time. Slankies.